This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Alma McCarty. This morning on Sunrise, a mother stands charged with her four-year-old son's murder. The new video that appears to show the suspect in Clark County. Plus, a deadline appro quickly approaching what Legacy and Regents are saying about the possibility that thousands of patients could soon be forced to pay more. But before we get to those headlines, let's check in, of course, with Daisy Caballero for a quick look at the forecast. Good morning, Daisy. Hey, good morning, Alma, and happy Saturday, everyone. Wanted to take you out to the Reserve Golf Course. Picture perfect view for this morning. We're holding 40 degrees. Last check here with winds coming out from the west northwest at right about five miles an hour. Winds will be gusty at times, but just mainly on the coastline. Take a look at your current temperatures. 38 out and boring also for Happy Valley travel. Outdill 2, 45 here in the Rose City. Looking at the rest of our map here, we're seeing close to freezing temperatures over east, and that's the case for uh, Pendleton and John Day, while the coastline is in the upper 40s for places like Astoria. Now looking at our satellite radar, for the most part, we are dealing with clear blue skies, while folks in central and southern Oregon being hit with maybe some light passing showers or also a little bit of that cloud coverage, all thanks to a low pressure system that's currently hitting parts of uh, California this morning. All right, Portland, this is what your day at a glance will look like 58 by noon with sunny skies, mostly sunny skies for the second half of our Saturday, 63 by five o'clock with that sunset at 737. But we have a lot more to talk about, including a warm up that we'll see 70s could be in the forecast. We'll talk about when that's happening coming up. Daisy, thank you. It has already been a busy weekend for local police. Homicide detectives spend their night working at a Mac station in Northeast Portland after a fatal stabbing. Police say when they arrived at the 82nd Avenue station around six o'clock last night, they found one man dead on the platform. They quickly arrested another man. Authorities say it appears he stabbed the other on board an eastbound Max train. Another stabbing in Old Town left one person injured. This was just after 9 o'clock last night along West Burnside between 4th and 5th. Authorities say one person was taken to the hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Police say two people have been detained. There are new developments in a tragic case of a missing four-year-old boy found dead in western Washington. The child's mother, who was already in custody in Clark County, is now charged with murder. Catherine Cook went to Ridgefield, where the staff at a local bar helped police track the suspect. The death of four-year-old Ariel Garcia is now a murder case. On Friday evening, Everett police arrested the boy's mom, Janet Garcia, for first and second degree murder and assault of a child in the first degree. At the time of her arrest, Garcia was in Vancouver, already in the Clark County Jail. Sheriff's deputies there say they found Garcia in Ridgefield on Wednesday. Court documents show Garcia parked her car here at the Three Peaks public house and tap room in Ridgefield. Security video from the bar shows a woman who appears to be the suspect pull into the parking lot around 345. A few minutes later, she gets out of her car and starts walking north. We have no idea. We're very much off the beaten path. And she didn't come in. Bartender Colleen McCauley says later that night, investigators showed up and watched this video. We were super shocked. And I, when the police came, the minute he said um, they were looking for a child, it really sunk in for everybody. I mean, that makes it so much worse. Sheriff's deputies towed the car and found Garcia about a half mile away from the tap house. Court documents show deputies were called to a home on Northeast 235th Street, reporting Garcia was there and wasn't wanted. Deputies noted blood on Garcia's shoes and shirt. Initially, deputies arrested Garcia for giving a false statement to police. Arrest documents show Garcia told investigators her son had fallen and hit his head and that she'd taken him to a friend's house in Seattle. But then on Thursday evening, Everett police found Ariel's body along I-5 in Pierce County. On Friday, officers drove to Vancouver and arrested Garcia for murder. I had no idea that it was this horrible ending. It's going to be. Dorothy Crossman lives near to where Ariel and his mother lived in Everett. She's been watching this case closely. Kind of sick to my stomach with this horrible and, and wondering why, um, why it took so long to find him and why there hasn't been any information given out to the public about it. Now everyone knows much more. 
including Colleen McCulley. So I hope justice is served and, and it's awful. Jenna Garcia was booked into the Snohomish County Jail last night. The medical examiner there is working to determine Ariel's exact cause of death. It's worth noting court documents show just a few days before Ariel disappeared, his grandmother filed a petition for emergency guardianship. She told the court that her daughter struggled with substance abuse and said she was scared that Garcia would harm her son. This morning, the temporary suspension of bottle returns at two downtown spots will be extended for at least another month. Services were paused at a plaid pantry store and a Safeway along Southwest Jefferson. It's part of an effort to slow criminal activity around some people who deposit bottles and cans and use that money to buy drugs. Amtrak trains have once again been disrupted from between Seattle and Portland. It's all because of some sort of blockage related to previous weather events between Kelso and Vancouver. Amtrak says Cascades trains are suspended and it's providing alternative transportation. No word on when rail service might resume. Legacy Health and Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield have until the end of the weekend to reach an agreement on a new contract. If they don't, it could leave thousands of patients paying more for health care or searching for new doctors. Legacy wants higher insurance payments because of increasing health care costs. But Regents says it's not backing down and says what Legacy wants is unreasonable. We talked to Legacy who said they submitted a counteroffer on Friday in hopes of reaching an agreement before the Sunday deadline. Uh, we know how challenging it is to navigate health care and to add the uncertainty of this contract. We understand it's really painful, um, but what we're trying to do is uh, uh, get fair and equitable reimbursement that would allow us to continue to serve them and to be a provider within the community. Negotiations are ongoing. By the way, Providence Health also asked for payment increases that Regions said it couldn't afford. Though in January, on the day of the deadline, the two companies were able to find a way forward.